Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. We are continuing our journey to complete the Wizard's Apprentice and we're starting Chapter 2, The Talisman and the Eye. Uh, we're going to read you just a little bit of info. Now we just completed this one, of course, and again, as you remember, we ended uh, right around level 4, nearly level 5, matter of fact. We were captured and put on a slave ship and stripped of all our gear. We exported our character, as the game suggested to us at the end, with all our gear available. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to lose all that gear right here at the beginning. So again, we're going to start with a level 4 character, nearly level 5. Playtime in this one is going to be very large, 18 hours they suggest. And again, part of a series, we have three parts here, we're on part 2 now. We have all the parts, this is patch 1.23 for those of you that uh, need to know that information. Uh, this one here, for those of you that didn't know and you didn't read the descriptions, uh, there are two available Wizard's Apprentice Part 1s out there the site that I gave you has both of them make sure that if you're comparing your stuff to mine that you're using the most advanced part which is a 2.17 I think or 2.07 something like that um, you will know the difference between it and my or the more advanced version which I played versus the less advanced version in that the module that you put in your modules folder in my Let's Play was a very large folder for the Wizard's Apprentice, uh, which literally said uh, TWA Prologue, I think, and it was a massive set of files inside that folder. The lesser version, which you can still play, I'm sure, you can get from the Nexus, as well as the link that I provided at Neverwinter Vault, which has the older version, the 1.07 or 1.17, something like that. Its folder, or actually its file, I should say, for the module really is just a module. It's one file. So you'll know the difference right away. If you only have just the one file for their module for Chapter 1, then you have the older version. You probably want the newer one to get all the good gravy. This one here, uh, just to give you some info, after a mysterious figure invaded our, uh, your home in Cairn Valley and led a tribe of orcs against you to capture a powerful potion, you awake aboard a slave ship bound for parts unknown. So again, this is Chapter 2, uh, recommended it's a single player game, recommended for Wizard or Sorcerer. You could play a Bard, but really these two would be the ones you want to play the most. Uh, you can almost play anything, quite frankly, but it's really geared towards the Arcane Casters. Um, never tried it, of course, as a Warlock, and I'm not a big fan of Warlock play anyway. But you could give it a try, and I don't think that there's going to be anything that's going to be broken that keeps you from doing that. But again, start at level 4. We're going to end about level 12, uh, about 18 hours, and it should be a very fun role-playing game. There's a lot of tutorials out there for this as far as uh, text that you can read about uh, what to do, spells to pick, skills to uh, enlist in, and when you download this, and again, I'll give you the, uh, in the description down below, you'll have the link for Chapter 2. You'll see when you download those files, they also have... Um, suggestions for skills, spell usage, and ones to pick, ones uh, that would be more useful than another. I happen to know uh, Clairvoyance and Clairaudience are phenomenal. It's one spell. Um, that in this game, Chapter 2, you can use it to get a sense of the surroundings around you. So if you, anytime you walk into a cave or walk outside into another zone, if you activate clairvoyance, clairaudience, it tells you a little bit about the surrounding terrain and whether that means, you know, there's X amount of bad guys or that what type of bad guys you're going to encounter or, oh, hey, there's a hidden cave in, you know, the upper north part of the map. You know, stuff that you wouldn't know without just randomly exploring. So, useful stuff there. Uh, other spells I hear that are useful are uh, your charm spells. You can actually get a lot of text dialogue and maybe even XP for charming some of the baddies uh, and getting some extra info from you. So now again, we're going to select our character and try to remember what our character was called. It was an odd last name on that one. This and here it is, Marin. And you see, here's our level four Marin that we exported. So this is the female 
uh, Strongheart Halfling we had from last Let's Play. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff last time. Uh, we're pretty bumped up for our physical, uh, physical attributes, for our mental attributes of intelligence, which is our main attribute. Um, got some decent dexterity going for us, so we have some good armor class. Of course, we're already the little midget, so we have all kinds of extra armor class that way. Constitution's up. Strength is weak. Charisma's, you know, average. You know, nothing stellar there, but let's let's start our let's play. Ooh, that's a nice loading screen, too. Creepy as hell. And she's staring at me. She, she's looking right at me. Alright, Talisman in the eye. Okay. Welcome to the Wizard's Apprentice Chapter 2, The Talisman in the Eye. And thank you for playing. If you have your character from the Wizard's Apprentice 1, you'll be able to start the module directly. Sure do. If you do not have your character from the Wizard's Apprentice 1, select Level Up. You'll be leveled up to halfway through Level 4, so we're already good there. You'll also be given some standard equipment and scrolls to scribe that you would have received if you had played the Wizard's Apprentice 1. And again, assuming you're a wizard. If you choose to level up, when you are done, come back and speak to me again, and you can begin. And I need to level up, ready to start. Uh, start module, I have my character from the Wizard's Apprentice 1. Have fun and keep your spellbook full. Start the game. Nice. I like that. That's a very nice way to do it. So you don't have to do chapter one over again. It's not that it was difficult. Um, I certainly spent a lot of time on it, and there's a lot of deaths that you guys didn't get to see because I kept that stuff off camera because you don't want to see me fail miserably repeatedly on the same spot. But there's good stuff here. I certainly like chapter one, and everything I hear about online says that chapter two is large and creepy. felt like months at sea, you find yourself in a bleak harbor town set in a barren, icy wilderness. Yeah, I'd say. You have little time to ponder the town as the man in robes is suddenly standing before you with the captain of the ship. I will remember your faces. Alright, what do you guys got to say here? Yes, this is the one. Do not remove her from the cage. I have specific instructions on how to handle her. Mm -hmm. I got spells. I'm kick your ass when I got this cage. Hope your master will make this worth my while. I lost three crew members in one full month out of my usual trade route delivering this wretch to you. Ooh, I'm gonna kick your ass first. You will find the payment more than sufficient. But if anything is missing from her belongings, you will never lay eyes on the ocean again. Ooh, they're stealing all my goods. Don't want my dagger back. Miss my dagger. How for you? You feel the familiar giddy rush of magical energy as the robe man discharges a spell at you, then plunging my neckline. I don't know what is it. Plunging me in the darkness, probably. Bad touching me while I'm unconscious. That's gonna piss me off. Okay, so we're loading up. Mm, okay, your journal has been updated recently. Oh, gee, there's a dead guy. You awake on a damp floor with a severe headache, gazing into the eyes of your cellmate. Ugh. And it gazes back. You, in eerie silence. I see. I am to have company. What the? Oh, you leap to your feet as the voice cuts through the still and dank silence of the dungeon. This is doofus. Whirling, you see a man dressed in tattered clothes standing in the corner. He speaks. Who are you? This has got to be another prisoner, right? If he's in tattered clothes. 
Certainly not someone who sneaks up behind people in dank prison cells and scares them half to death by the gods. Are you some sort of barbarian? Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry about that. You express remorse as quickly as you give offense. It stretches the credibility of your sincerity. He's a well-spoken barbarian. I'll give him that. What? I have found that for those to whom insults come so readily, remorse rarely comes quickly, if at all. Yeah, I believe it. And I have found... Nah, I don't want to be a jackass. We're all in prison together. Look, I apologize for the barbarian thing. And I have not accepted... Oh, screw you, man. I suppose where you come from, such manners are lacking. Where I come from, it would be considered an embarrassment for a woman to be seen in such a dress. Not a dress. It's a robe. It's a robe, yeah, exactly. You tell me. Are you trying to convince me or yourself? Ah, oh, shut up. I don't like this guy. Shh, someone's coming. Okay. Between the bars of the iron portcullis, you recognize the man from the docks. His face is still drawn and cruel. He addresses you. He Your journal's been updated. The wizard from the docks. Ignore him. The only fool in here, and he said, "There you, you there, fool." Hmm. I'd watch my language if I were you. Hmm. You would do well to learn some respect. It will make your stay here less painful. Bite me. You know, I'm not very intimidated by you right now. You look old and weak. You may have some talent with the arcane, but I can sense that this cell is shrouded in a dampening field that prevents magical discharge. Uh oh, I got no spells, huh? So unless you want to hike up your skirt and come in here and face me, then you can keep your pitiful attempts at intimidation to yourself. Mm. I knew it was a dress. Shut up. Shut it. Yes, I will enjoy your re-education a great deal. Get some rest. You have a big day ahead, you fool. Oh, look at that guy. Look at him. Uh, let's see. Footsteps rouse you from your slumber, and a new face appears at your cell door. This man is much younger than the first. His robes identify him as a wizard, but he is clearly new to the art. In his hand you see something. It's a rod of teleportation. Oh, hey, that's mine. Your rod of teleportation that you lost when the orcs attacked you at your master's tower back in Cairn Valley. He holds out the rod and speaks. Is this like a jailbreak? Is this yours? Why? We want to know the activation word, don't have the extra time to spare to divine it. Like I'm gonna tell you, doofus. You see the young mage looking intently at you and realize his concentration is focused on you inside the cell. A plan forms in your mind you must act before your captor's attention shifts away from you. Speak the activation word to the rod of teleportation. What the hell is that going to do? It worked. The rod teleported the young mage to his location of concentration. Oh, we teleported him inside the cage. <laughs> Get him! Barbarian looks at you as though surprised by your decisiveness. The hesitation only lasts a moment and he leaps to your side. Ah, oh, outstanding. We got a partner. Let's get this some bitch. Attack! He can't cast spells in here. He he he. Remember, we got a dampening field, bitch. You got nothing. Okay, we got a skeleton. Bedroll. We got any gear? We ain't got shite for weapons. Uh, and we got yeah. him. Look at him. He ain't got shit for weapons either. He's got tattered animal skins too. That's some armor for him. I got wizard robes again. Oh, I don't even got my iron robes. Oh, boo. Alright, uh, well while he's doing that... Oh, I do have spells. Oh, do the spells work in here? No, they don't. Hey, why don't you do yourself a favor? Yes. Buff up. Muck him up, huh? Nice, we just kicked his clock. I see that I've underestimated the powers of my cellmate. Pause this here, just in case. Um, 
Mm, I'll go with one. I want to be nice. Dude just saved my butt, really. As have I. The barbarian studies you closely, then his face softens almost imperceptibly. We worked well as a team. You fought well. Thank you. I do not know if I could have taken him on my own. I probably could. I am puzzled. It was very foolish of the young wizard to teleport into our cell. He must have known it would strip him of his magical powers. <laughs> Before I get be all cool. I used the rod he was carrying to teleport him into our cell. Barbarian looks at you in open surprise and perhaps admiration. Then I have truly underestimated your power. It wasn't my power. He was holding a rod of teleportation. My rod of teleportation. To use it, you concentrate on a location you can see and then speak the activation word. Go on. It looked like the wizard was concentrating on me, so I took the gamble and said the word. Apparently it worked. Your cunning has saved our lives, or at least prolonged them for a time. If we are to survive, we must escape quickly. I have heard tales of this place and seen the upper levels of this dark tower. Okay, we're in the tower, huh? Okay. Well, we're in the basement more likely than not, right? We're in the dungeon. Uh, okay, let's go. Wait, there are guards around the corner. If we are to live, we need to develop a plan. Uh, well, we could ask him his advice, or I say, I think we should try to secure the dungeon first. Silence the guards who may raise an alarm. I like that one. That's the plan I would go with anyway. A wise decision. I agree. What was I saying? Reputation with Blair Drake increased by two. Reputation is now neutral. 55 of 100. Woot. I guess this is how well he trusts us. That's a nice mechanic. I think they do this in the original version of the game. Uh, the original campaign, I should say. Okay. Wise decision. I agree. Upstairs will probably be different. There may be dozens of guards. We will need some sort of diversion. I also need to get some mapping supplies and my equipment back. It could help us escape. I saw my equipment on the slave ship and it may be here. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna get my damn stuff back. I got my rod of teleportation though, it sounds like. I think it's a mistake to tarry longer than we must, but your cleverness has provided our opportunity for escape. Therefore, I will aid you in finding your equipment. Bully! Let's do this. Now let's make haste for each second and this place brings death upon us. Area map will be unavailable until you find mapping supplies. So, map unavailable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sucks, balls. Let's get the remains. I want to. Will the robes do me any good? No. Alright, teleportation. And it looks like we got a cell key. So, it's nice of him to bring the key with us. We have a bedroll, but I got my potions are already here. Let's get the hell out. Looks like it's auto-saving for us. We should probably actually make our own real save for this too so I don't screw something up here. So there was a dampening spell inside, or dampening of spells I should say, inside the cell here. Um, I would assume that means I can use my spells now. Looks like we have a door, a door, maybe the cages, there's a signpost. Only feed Zarnoth one pig or two chickens every fortnight. What the hell is a Zarnoth? I see a web. Is there a spider in there? Yeah, I don't want to see it. Okay. Uh, I have no abilities except for my spells. He has buffed himself and now is debuffed from this us taking so much time. So he's clearly a barbarian with the... Uh, yes. Let's actually set his some behavior. Range weapons. Yeah, see I have a glitch in my files here somewhere, guys, just so we're clear on this. I had this on the last Let's Play, but I edited it out, but I want to show it to you because we actually do have a companion now. So my range weapon doesn't set right here. I can set my follow distance at medium, I think is a good idea. He doesn't disarm traps or recover traps. He can defend me. I'll keep his guard distance at default, whatever the hell that is. He doesn't open locks uh, or pick up items. He's not stealthy. I'm hiding. I can shut that off. 
He doesn't cast spells, but let's keep it to scaled for everybody, me and him, because if I control him in a fight, I don't want my spellcaster zipping every damn spell under the sun. Uh, item usage, sure. Healing anything, I'm sure. Ability usage on. That's his rage maneuver, his barbarian, whatever. Yeah. There. Summoning. He doesn't summon. Or polymorph. And I don't like infinite buffs on anybody, so we're making that an all thing. I'm at weapon switching. Sure. He can keep his ranged weapon. Switch to melee distance far. Ah, uh, see what does that mean? This character will switch to melee weapons when enemies are fairly far away. Let's make that medium. Because if he can shoot them up at least once, if we ever get a bow or a sling or something, maybe. Melee attack for party. Character will use same melee attack distances. Okay, yeah, I like that because uh, this will mean that he, if I'm engaged in melee, then he's going to come to my aid and make sure he's meleeing the shit out of stuff. And he's definitely built for melee. I am not. We won't have back away off for him because that's my thing. Disable melee attacks. Hell no. Dual wielding. Yeah. If he can use either of those things, I'll let them do that. And at that point, we're pretty good. Feats, he has cleave, which is automatic. Power attack, which is over here, which increases his damage, decreases his, you know, when it's on, decreases his attack bonus. Proficient in simple martial weapons. He has the shield proficiency. And light medium armor he can use. Quick to master, because he's human. Uh, he is skilled, so again, like a human, he gets that extra skill point. Barbarian fast movements auto. Barbarian range we have. He has trap sense. So he'll be able to see traps. That's okay, I guess. Uncanny dodge, which I get. I hear that is broken. But whatever. He has it. Uh, let's see if he has taunt. He does, and it's negative. So his taunt sucks balls. Because his charisma is low. Yeah. He's not built for anything, charismatically speaking. Um, the reason I put that here is in case we do start investing points in taunt, we can debuff a target's armor class with it. Right? Everything else here is pretty much an auto use ability as far as I know, so we'll leave that alone. He shouldn't have any spells. He has no equipment except for his tattered animal skins and this rib club that we gave him. But since he does all the melee damage, I'm cool with that. She has any feats that I need to worry about. I have a pet familiar. It's a cat, right? Uh, history of a veteran. Weapon finesse. I still got that. Let's see if they gave me my... What's that feat that I got last time? Spell casting prodigy. Still here. That's the baby. Yeah. Oh, I kick ass. All right. Skills. My time. My taunt sucks, balls. Uh, so I ain't gonna bother with it. Uh, we'll level his up potentially. Um, I don't worry about any of that. Okay, so we do have spells though, and like all good wizards with spells, I like to cast them. Now we're trying to sneak sneak around, but I don't know how good that's gonna work. Uh, I would. Like, oh yeah, see, I'm missing all kinds of spells. They took all my gear. So my intelligence de uh, buff is gone down because it's not on my character anymore. I don't have that gear because I had intelligence of 19 when we finished the last game. So that's gone. I had extra spell slots because of my uh, dagger. Those are gone. So I've lost two spells and two spells. And these were the ones that were left in. So eventually we'll replace them. But this is what we got. So because this is what we got, this is what we're staying with. Now I'm going to buff up him for a light spell. I want him to be able to see things. I'm going to make a break for that door there. Imp assistance. Okay, now let's close that door. Just in case. What have we got in here? So I got potions. 
Yes, please. What is that? That was a weird looking potion. What was that called? Potion of Spell Restoration. Prize among magic users. Divine, arcane, and otherwise. This potion restores the last memorized spells to memory without requiring time to study and rest. Oh, hell yeah. It also restores the charges to magical items carried by the drinker. Boom, that means you. Um, beware, however, as it also strips the drinker of all magical defenses. And Oh, so this is like taking a knee as far as getting all your spells and recharges back on your rechargeable items. It doesn't heal you as though it sounds like and it takes off your buff so again just like taking a knee so this will be my way of getting my spells back oh that's beautiful okay let's pass off the potion of bark skin to him though potion lore I'll keep we'll give him the potion of moderate wounds too let's hotkey some of this stuff potion of lore I probably don't even need a hotkey that we'll potion of hotkey that over there though because if I need spells back in a minute that'll be the way to go now I am at what I think is uh, a respectable armor class for this character. Remember, I get a plus three from a dexterity, plus one from luck of heroes, and I must be getting another plus one from being a short person. So I get a 15 to my uh, armor class instead of the normal 10. Yes. He is less than me, and he's even got armor on. So he's getting three and one from dexterity, and that's all he gets. So three and one is four, so four plus the ninja double 10 that everybody gets. He's got 14. That jives well, too. He's strong. He's got a lot of constitution, so therefore he's my meat shield. He doesn't have much in the way of brains, but I don't need him to have much in the way of brains. Um, as a matter of fact, I am going to change one thing for his behavior. I don't want him using items. I'm going to turn that off for him and everybody. And the reason I say that is I don't want to have him downing potions left and right for battle they doesn't need to down. Healing potions, I'm cool with that. Okay, now what do we got here? Weak fire essence, weak water essence, sheet of parchment, and a scroll that's unidentified. Ice stone. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, got books here. So we got a oh, summoning circle. Got some scrolls. Yes, please. Some more scrolls. Take all that. This is probably so you can get your spell book up to snuff either your level 2 spells or lower, or their spells that we're going to need for escape. But first, let's pause and see what we found. Raise dead, raise dead, raise dead. Think they're trying to tell us something? Uh, burning hands, summoning book, there's mirror image. Okay, I have what? Ice storm, acid arrow, burning hands. Nice. Those are some good spells. Ice storm I don't even have because it's a yeah it's a high level spell, level four. Like we're only level two, so this is a good spell. So seriously good damage. And as you can see, area of effect: three d six points of bludgeoning damage and two d six points of cold damage. Plus another 1d6 cold damage per three caster levels. And this one's a level nine caster level spell from the scroll, so that's 3d6 more. So that's six, 8d6 of damage in an AoE. Now again, I'm playing on the level where I could AoE my own character, so I gotta be real careful with that shit. Cast it at distance, not on a target, on the ground. If I cast it on a target and the target decides to charge me, then I could be hitting him, her, it and anyone around it, which could include me, so I gotta be careful with that stuff. I have Mirror Image, which as you know is a great spell. Uh, Grease is more offensive. And I put, for those of you that don't know, from my other Let's Play or haven't seen them, I usually put my healing potions and whatnot here, buffs here, you know, potions of like Cat's Grace or Bull Strength or um, bark skin, stuff like that. And then in this column I usually do my offensive spells. Just what you're seeing now. Uh, wands and stuff like that I usually put down here, down here. Healing kits, which we don't have yet. Uh, but I should have access to that spell already, that spell already. This spell, Gedley's, oh, Gedley's, I almost forgot you. Yeah, forget you, buddy. So those are good spells. I can do acid damage, fire damage, electric damage, cold damage. 
They're giving me kind of a potpourri of stuff here. I wonder if there's a reason for that. But right, anyway, we have sheet of parchment. This parchment contains various notes on recent summoning experiments. You know, there's one portion in particular. For reliable results, place a single essence on the summoning circle and cast a complementary element spell on the circle. Oh. Oh. Is that the summoning circle there? And these are the essences. What's this thing here? This book contains information on using arcane magic to summon various creatures. Wolf, dire badger. Oh, this is my how to summon various uh, not pets. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, summoning spells. So my level one is the wolf. Yeah, I saw that in my last let's play. Level two is the dire badger, which I have that spell. I just never really learned it. You know, you know, rested up and had it in my queue. Dire wolf, dire boar. Yeah, here's a bear. Yeah, you aren't getting that bear spell anytime soon. Oh, shadow mastiff. Mastiff, what is that? Shadow mastiff. Sounds cool. Dire bear, but that's a bad motor scooter. Huge elemental, greater elemental, and an elder elemental. Those have got to just mean as all piss. So that's awesome. I wonder why that is important. Okay, so we have everything out of here. That we want to just right. Now we have this summoning circle and that note single essence on the summoning circle and cast a complementary spell uh, on the circle. Okay, so like I have a fire one and a burning hand, and I have a water one, I imagine water would be like ice, or ray of frost even, hell it might even use scorching ray, that's a better spell bone, and this one's level one, uh, let's try, put the water one in here, first, and if this is right, it says to cast a copper elemental spell on the circle, so elemental spell for water would have to be like cold, right, so that should work, Imp. What is your bidding? My bidding. Go through the clouds and this time recap. Oh. What have you summoned me for? There we go. Go through the upper levels of this tower and wreak havoc. The little imp shrieks and dealt with delight and flees out of the room. Bye, little imp buddy. Oh, that's awesome. So we're basically sending up our imps here to be D-bags to the whoever, you know, the people that mess with me. All right, so I have this spell. Burning hands on the summoning circle. Hoofed up. <laughs> I got a fire imp now. Yeah. What is your bidding? Yeah, I know what to do. Go through the upper levels of this tower and wreak havoc. The imp shrieks with the light and flies out of the room. Okay, I've been upgrading my journal here. Let me just do that real quick for uh, pause. In my journal. You have created one diversion to distract the guards upstairs. You suspect that this is insufficient. So we must have to distract the guards. Maybe that's what this is. See a map. You lost all your mapping supplies before your capture. Until you find more supplies to map your surroundings, the area map will be unavailable. Okay, you already knew that. Equipment. You saw your equipment on the boat that brought you here, and you suspect it was brought to the tower with you. At least you hope it was. If you can find it, your chances of survival will increase. The wizard from the dock. The wizard from the docks. When your ship arrived in port, it was quickly greeted by a lone wizard with a cruel face and manner. Yeah, I remember that break. You saw this wizard again the next day when he came to see you in your cell. His identity is a mystery to you. You know, kick him in the ball sack, see what that does. Recent events. Many things has happened to you in the past weeks. First, the wizard you were apprenticed to was called away to an important meeting. Then you found a powerful magical substance beneath your master's tower. Shortly thereafter, a dark figure appeared, as if from nowhere. He took the potion and subdued you. You woke up a day later, imprisoned in a magically dampened cell on a slave ship, bound for parts unknown. Unknown, that is, until you arrived in this bleak, 
Harbor Town and were taken to a dungeon, which is where you find yourself now. You have lost all of your equipment and the rod of teleportation your master gave you prior to his departure, but I got that back. You now find yourself imprisoned in a cold dungeon after a long ocean void, which ended in a small frigid harbor time. Okay, that must be where we're at. Okay, imp assistance. To create a distraction, you have enlisted the help of two imps you summoned. Kick ass. Okay, so I'm going to close this here for a quick second. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's on me, honey. There we go. I need to make sure I haven't forgotten something. Okay. We've looted all here. Looks like we got another door here. Some treasure there. I know we're supermaning a little bit here. Oh, there's a drunken something. Drunk guard. Lion crate. Okay, let's go mess with him next, I sure. Oh, let's walk over this way, see what we can see. We got the spider signposts over here. I can't see them, but it said only feed them. A chicken, two chickens or a pig every other fortnight or something like that. Because they don't want them to get too big. He's an attack spider. Uh, but we've already had quite a bit of adventure already today, so let's actually cut this short. My name is Brother Mutant. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you like this Let's Play as much as I think I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, we're doing well. Leveling up before you know it here. We have spells, the ability to get spells back, so we can always change stuff around, but I'm going to burn through these first before I do something stupid like use one of these potions. And I'll redo my spell book to include things like magic armor, or excuse me, mage armor, say it the right way. Mage armor, which is a much longer lasting buff for my level 4 wizard. Uh, we have a new companion, but with that, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye now.